Hi, and welcome to Inside the Wooniverse, a podcast brought to you from the corner of Fringe and Main. I'm your host, Colette Baron reed and I am unbelievably thrilled to be here with Donna Eden. Donna is a pioneer in the field of holistic healing. She is one of the most sought after, most joyous. And when I say that, I am, I mean it. Wait till you get to know her. She's the most authoritative expert on energy medicine. She's been able to see the body's energies from childhood and has even healed herself from an incurable illness. And I'm going to put that in quotations, but this iPad is too heavy, so I don't know how to do that. Okay. Anyway, Donna's classic book, Energy Medicine, is the textbook in hundreds of healing classes. It's available in 19 languages. It has won countless awards and her most recent book, The Energies of Love, achieved bestseller status on the New York Times relationship list. She's treated over 10,000 individual clients. I bet you it's 100,000, right? But you can, you can, it's 100, right? We missed a zero. 100,000, I knew that. 100,000 individual clients and has developed a system for teaching others to work their own energies to increase their health and vitality. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people have been certified through Donna's program, and they've gone on to teach and provide healing services to thousands around the world, including me. Welcome, Donna. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Ah. You're one of my daughter's favorite people. Oh, my God. Well, I love your daughter, too. She's one of my favorite people. And I have to tell you, you know, before we dig into your life, et cetera, I just want to say at the top of this conversation about how you impacted me during the pandemic. Like I literally watched every one of your free videos, you know, the figure eights. We'll talk about that later, but I'm serious. Like it helped me so much. And as a result of that, of course, I told everybody in my school and all the other social channels because it was life changing what you teach. And I have been impacted this in such an incredible way. So this is why I really wanted you on here. So let's dig in. So I want to talk about you from the beginning because most people want to talk about your work right away. And I want to wait on that a bit because I think your story is unbelievable. So what was your life like growing up? Were you always in touch with energy? Well, I thought the whole world was in touch with energy. I didn't know I was any different. I, I just, energy was the most obvious thing there was. And, um, and so I always saw it. My mother saw energy, and uh, and she just kept it alive. I have a brother and a sister, and and all three of us saw energy. We felt sorry for my dad because he couldn't. We, I thought something was really wrong with Daddy because you know, <laughs> the rest of us saw energy. But I really was. I was twenty years old before I found out that the whole world didn't see energy. I had no idea. So let's, can we just tell me what it was like to see the energy? Like what, what was it, what did it mean that everybody but your dad could see the energy, which made you think there was something wrong with him, not realizing that all, right? So how was it to see it? Like, what was it like for you? Well, I mean, you, you saw the, the, a person's aura and all the bands around them, all the different colors. And it was exciting. It's like seeing a great outfit on somebody you get i got to see their aura and somebody often somebody had something really unique and and i can remember my mother saying when i was just two or three years old oh look at that look at that look at that person what do you see and we'd all get excited and talk about it and what did we think that meant and yeah and it's just something it was the most not only the most natural thing on earth but it seemed it made life very thrilling and exciting. Yeah. So um, when you walk down the street, for example, today, obviously, because you teach people this, like you really do teach people this, but do you see somebody's illnesses, for example? Could you tell by uh, the shift in their energy, the signature of that energy? I, I'm assuming that's what you would, I mean, that's just yes. my way of saying it. Yes, you said that really well. Um, yes, I, I, it, yes, I, I do see. I see when somebody has a cancer, or if somebody has uh, the energy of a cold, or or if somebody's depressed or angry. All of those energies show up, and most people can see angry energy. Right. They don't know they see it, but they see it. But so yes, and when I was young, I was very inappropriate because I'd rush to tell somebody, oh. Here's what's going on. <laughs> You're interviewing somebody I didn't know. And, but I, I thought that was what we all did. Right. And so, no um, boundaries. 
no no boundaries. I never had boundaries in my whole life. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Um, but that's actually interesting too. So, you know, how did you manage this? I mean, you had to figure out how to manage it at some point, right? I mean, this is something you, you discovered at 20, 21 years of age that the most people couldn't see what you saw, that yeah. your family was unusual, that not the rest of the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did you manage it, especially with the, with the sense of the energies and the boundaries that you didn't have? How did you get them? Well, uh, honest to God, it thrilled me. It thrilled me. I wasn't ever afraid of it because I thought it was just what was. And, um, and then when I, when I was 20 and found out I actually was married to another man, and he, he threatened to commit me if I didn't shut up and never spoke of that again, wow. <laughs> because he was he was very left brain and you know what you what was real and what wasn't real to him was very different. But um, what happened is that I began to realize that people maybe there was something I could do for somebody who was sick, but I it really started with myself. Because from the time I was 16, I had multiple sclerosis. Wow. And it got worse and worse as the time went on. And by the time I was 27, I had a heart attack. And then I went to see, then my legs were giving out. So I could walk less and less and less. And sometimes, do you know what tetany is? No. What is that? It's when, when a little, you get little prickle things all over your skin and it just feels like something is prickling you all over your skin. I got that everywhere all over my body and I went to see five different specialists and every one of them told me something very similar, that my all my organs were breaking down and that I really, a couple of them gave me exact sort of when I could expect to die and the other three said I was, this was not going to change. It wasn't going to turn around and I needed to get everything in order if I had kids. And, and it was very interesting. And I, I can't explain it. But instead of feeling scared, I just felt like I had lightning hit me on that fifth doctor. I was like, oh, oh, I guess I'll have to, I'll heal myself. Because <laughs> I, I, I just was, of course I would. And and I knew when I left there that day that I'd never go see a doctor again. Wow. I wouldn't go that route because, you know, th those poor souls, I just didn't know. And so I went home. And it's not like I knew what I was going to do, but I went home and I put one hand on my knee and the other hand up around my hip. And I just held my hands there. And it only took about three minutes before the energy connected up between my hands. I could see it and I could feel it. And it was my thighs that had no energy before and I couldn't walk. So suddenly the energy connected up and I knew this was just the beginning. And I was going to get myself completely well. Wow. And, and, and that's what I did. And it's interesting. I, it, originally, I didn't get all the way well with multiple sclerosis. Originally, all of my allergies went away. Okay, this is really important. So you actually went to heal yourself of the MS, but instead all your allergies went away. Yes. Oh my God. And, I, and you, I so you, this was really allergies. trial and error. Yes, it was trial and error. I didn't know what I was doing and there was nobody out there to, to learn from. And so I, I, I just, it was trial and error. And when, I, when something would work, it would be so exciting. And if something didn't work, I said, okay, that's not the route, you know, it was like, wow. but, but I also found that when I got over my allergies and my asthma, I had asthma, both of those went away. Oh, I lost 15 pounds <laughs> because, because my energy was shifting and suddenly my metabolism turned on. So I realized everything was connected that if you healed one thing, it was going to affect everything else in your body and in your soul and your psyche and your spirit. So I was very excited throughout the whole thing. And, and then, but finally, you know, my MS was gone. And when that was gone, I wanted to share it with everybody. And I did. I just, I, I just made myself a pest. To everybody, telling, <laughs> I wanted people to know that they could heal themselves, that they weren't stuck with whatever it is they had. They were not stuck. So I did not think I was special or anything like right. that. I thought that 
gosh, we're, we've all got this. And how come we weren't taught this? So this, this is so fascinating. Um, okay. I want to correlate a few things and tell me if this is correct. Right. So, okay. cause I want to go back to something you talked about, about your starter husband, which, uh, your first one, <laughs> <laughs> you know, who wanted to put you away and, and you know, that yeah. you weren't allowed to talk. So was that person in those twenties before you were told that you were going to die basically by these other doctors? Yeah. So, that okay. Before, before, yes. right. And when were you able to say that's no more to the first husband? Oh, well, I tried to stick it out for a long time. So I'm just curious about that because um, was there a correlation, I guess, also with the denial of who you were? Was that just like, you know yeah. how sometimes resistance, we have resistance bands, right? You know, when we exercise, yeah. so it's kind of like maybe that yeah. was also good exercise for you. Who knows? But I was just curious, like how that impacted him when now all of a sudden this you're a person, he's told he's going to commit you. If you talk about the next thing, you know, you heal yourself of MS, asthma, allergies. Geez, everything was he still saying he's going to commit you or did he was he like amazed this this hadn't happened yet <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hadn't, I hadn't, but, yeah. but no he it was real interesting he he had sugar diabetes and he started getting better with his sugar diabetes and so that was when he began to shift a little bit oh i see uh, so he um he had sugar diabetes so you're healing yourself was that like an organic healing for him too? The reason I'm asking you this is because as we know, and I've learned from you, I mean, I discovered you 30 years ago. So, so I've been following you for 30 years, of course. Uh, so, you know, knowing that energy doesn't have those boundaries that we think it does, right? So yeah. you healing, yeah. and just like your body is connected, you heal your, like you just said, you heal your asthma, you heal your um, allergies, and all of a sudden something else heals. So Yes. He began to heal by osmosis. Is that correct? By osmosis. By osmosis. But then he got mad. Then he got, he got mad. So mad. <laughs> <laughs> he, got, he didn't believe in this. He didn't believe uh -huh. in it. And, and it was, I was throwing him off his whole paradigm, you know. So, I, and he had he, he had a dreadful doctor that he wanted to believe in. Right. And um, so for a while he got better and then he just turned me off. I mean, he just said no, no, no to anything. Right. And he didn't even want to sit too close to me. <laughs> oh, well, you have the most perfect man now. So that's like you yes, had some I, practice. Yes, um, and did. now you, you found the right man because we know David has been around a long, long time. Um, yes. That's This is a great story, really great story. So I'm going to ask you again. So you know, around the concept of boundaries, I know that you are boundaryless and, and love that, but you know, how do you help people who struggle with their energetic boundaries, right? When they're energetic boundaries, like how do you help people with that? Because we know that people are struggling right now. Yeah. I think, I think I, there was a blessing in the fact that I didn't ever have to think about that. I just thought, people's energies would come right through me. And what I did was I learned how to move it out. Uh -huh. So I still don't, people's energies can come right through me. I can pick up their illnesses, anything, but I move it out. And so I learned to do that very early on in life. So do you teach people how to move the energy given that boundaries are something that you offer? This is what I'm getting at the hard way. <laughs> you are, you are, at, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting around the bush here with this. The bottom line is, so instead of saying boundaries, you would then teach people how to move energy so that they don't get all stuck, right? And sticky with other people's stuff, right? Given that the collective is so pervasive lately. Yes. And here's something else that, that I would see with people that I thought was so interesting and I didn't even know how they did this. Um, growing up, I'd see people would maybe absorb somebody else's negativity or whatever somebody else thought they took in. And I thought that's so interesting because they're not taking in all the positive around them. They mm -hmm. just took in that negative. So I, I do teach people how to just take in the positive and not the negative too. And I teach people how, uh, how to move it out of their bodies. Right. And um, uh, I, there, there's a whole lot of things. My first thing I ever did, because I didn't have any energy exercises or anything, but when I, when I took in, I actually took in my mother's tuberculosis. 
she had TB when I was a little girl. And I, and I just knew I, I wanted to heal her so bad. I just thought it was something anybody could do. And, if, and the truth is anybody can heal. They just don't know it and haven't been taught. But I, I imagined I had a spigot at the bottom of my tailbone and I could turn that little faucet and it would all go out. And that's what happened. What? Okay. So, okay. Okay. So you took on your mother's tuberculosis or you took it in because it's more that rather than on. And then you put a spigot. Okay. So, and how long did that take for your mother's TB to go? Uh, it went fairly fast. We, um, yeah, pretty fast. So it sounds to me that part of your family had this open-ended energetic connection that, right, you could see energy, you could sense energy, you could feel energy. And so therefore you didn't even think it was anything. And you're like, okay, fine, I'm going to heal that. I'm going to take that away. And yet you all had illnesses visit you. Why do you think that is? Wow, that's a very good question. I think for myself, I'm really glad it all happened mm -hmm. because it was like an amazing education of what it's all about and how to help somebody else who's got this and all of the different ways and energy can come into you. It's not just because you've got this open heart. I mean, it can happen in a zillion ways. So one of the things I teach people are there's something all over the body called the wind points. The wind, the wind points? Wind points. And it's where energy can just come in like a wind inside your body so easily. And um, and and you and all you have to do is just, just turn them with your finger and you close them. Oh, and, 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 oh, oh, I need to take this class. Okay. <laughs> I've signed up to your radiant circuits class. I'm going to, I'm going to oh, take this one. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so this good. was like boot camp for you, really, when you think about it. Like your family went <laughs> through boot camp to learn how about yeah. energy medicine because you literally yeah. had to make it up as you went along. Do you think yeah. guides are working with you on this? Like, do you believe oh, in I guides? Do. Oh, I do. So much I do. I don't believe that any of it was a mistake. And mm -hmm. thank God I even got the multiple sclerosis because mm -hmm. you, you get it. You, you really get what's going on. And no, and I've been, and I've been guided. I've been guided through everything. So let's talk about energy medicine. Do, do you do you do muscle, muscle testing? You do do muscle testing, right? You do testing. Yeah, although so, I call it energy testing. Because, energy testing, yes, because, because tell me. Muscle testing tests a muscle, and, and people tend to want to stay strong with their muscles. And this isn't about that. You can test it with one finger because you're testing whether the energy is flowing through your body or not. Wow. That is fascinating. So this yeah. is literally, so what, so we call it energy testing. I apologize. I, I didn't know it was called energy <laughs> testing. Apologize. Yeah. Like I ought to know this because I'm supposedly following you. And meanwhile, I missed that one. <laughs> um, okay. So I would love it if we were talking about a little bit more about some of the techniques, because I know everybody's going to want to learn from you. And I actually want to ask you a question about one of the techniques that I learned from you, which is the figure eight, because that oh. oftentimes... If I get into that fight, flight, freeze, fawn, attach, you know, the, that, that kind of thing that if I'm thrown off by something, I won't remember tapping. I won't remember the script. I won't remember the thing I teach people. I will literally only remember the figure eight. It's, you don't have to remember much for that. You just got to go around yeah. your face. Why does yeah. that work so well? I am blown away by this and I want everybody listening to do it together and please explain it. <laughs> Well, you know, figure figure eight energy is also in the furthest out band of our aura. That's how the energy is out there. But figure eight energy combines all the different energy systems and helps them communicate. So they're suddenly connected. They are a community of energies that are all connected. You're not a whole bunch of little body parts. Right. You're one. And you've come back home to yourself. So it's really good. I'll tell you a real great figure eight memory I have. Love it. Uh, when, my, when my oldest daughter, Titania, uh, 10 years ago, was, was dying in the hospital. And, and I came and I was told she would never make it till morning. She, I'll just, she won't care my telling what happened. She was trying to get pregnant and she went to a fertility clinic and they gave her too much. They gave her too and, much? And, too oh my much God! Of, yes, and of all this, this, these, whatever medicines Drugs, and uh -huh. estrogens and stuff, gave her too much, and so she just had she was nothing but blood clots throughout her whole body, 
Wow. And she had one blood clot that went from her brain down to her toe. It was just one long blood clot. And so they said, she can't make it till morning. Well, I went into her room and, and, and it hurt her because her aura was leaving her body. It detaches wow. when you die. And I went in there and, and she said, and I got too close to her and she had no protection of an aura. And she said, oh, mom, that hurts, that hurts, don't. Because she couldn't, because you have no protection when your aura is gone. So I, I went to the sides of the wall and I just did figure eights back there. Just figure eights. And it began to weave her aura back to herself. And then I could go all the way up to her and touch her and kiss her. And, <laughs> and, and I know that that saved her. Figure eights are amazing. Well, I can tell you that I've done it with my entire school. I had, you know, everybody do it after I learned how to do it. And I realized, oh, my God, this is total magic. I felt it like, all, all, so does it do something with your nervous system? Is it your... Oh, it sure does. So can you explain I mean, it a little it, bit? It, again, it, it, it affects every energy system in your body and every organic system in your body, uh -huh. every physical part of your body. It affects everything and it binds them all together so that you're not pulled apart. Because when you get stressed, the blood leaves your forebrain, it goes into your body for the fight or flight. Uh -huh. And suddenly you don't have blood even going to different parts of your body that really need it. Right. Figure eights bring it all back. So just for anybody listening to this, um, the figure eight that we're talking about, actually, Donna, you have a free video on YouTube, right? Where it's, I, I think it's yes. just called figure eights. Stick your finger right between your eyebrows. That's where we start. And then I like to go right to the right. I go clockwise. So I go over my eye, eyebrow and around my eye. And then I crisscross over my nose, the bridge of my nose, and I come back on the other side. So basically you're drawing a figure eight around your eyes. And I do that until I yawn. Oh, that's and, good. Right, that's a excellent. yawn or something, like something releases. Yes. And I tell yes. you this, my stress goes, my fear goes. I don't even know what the heck it was that I was upset about. I will feel thinner. I know that sounds nuts, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. That figure eight also combines the left and right hemisphere of your brain. So what else can you apply this technique to if like, other than the stress? Like is obviously you, sh you just told us this amazing story about save being, my daughter. save it, her it will, life. It will, weave, it will weave your feels together. It will weave your wow. aura together. And when somebody's dying and, and they really shouldn't be dying, <laughs> figure eight. Uh -huh. um, I've had, I've had, um, if I've gone into a hotel room and I'm going to teach that night. And I go, oh, my God, the energy. I don't know who's been in this room. <laughs> the energy needs to be picked up. First, I'll just do figure eights around the room. I am going to do it, that it, in my house. I'm going to do that over yeah. my dogs. I, yeah. I'm going to do it over my dogs. I never, I yeah. never, ever knew that we could do this. Okay. This is so exciting. I love this conversation. So you teach about nine basic energy systems. If you don't mind, Donna, I'd like to go through them and maybe we could talk a little bit about them because they're so fascinating. Let's start with number one, meridians. Tell us a little bit about meridians. Meridians are wonderful. They're like pathways or streams in the body that go up the body and go down. And there are 14 meridians in the body and they each govern a different organ in the body. And they, they are amazing. I mean, they, they keep you animated and alive and they have a, an extraordinary intelligence and all the acupuncture points are on meridians. Awesome. And that's from Chinese medicine as well, too. So this isn't a new thing. Okay. Um, now, you, you also include the energy system of the chakras. So we have the meridians, then we have the chakras. How do yes. you see those? Well, I see a lot of chakras. There are seven main chakras that go straight up the body to the top of the head. And they spiral. They spiral. And they, there are seven layers on each chakra. And it's kind of like a, the aura around the body, only uh, on the chakra, there are the same layers around them. And a person carries in each chakra their story. Their story is carried in there. So if you start working on someone's chakra, very often the practitioner 
will we'll suddenly know the person's memory, perhaps, of something that happened sometime in their life because it shows up on the chakra. And we're all stronger in different chakras than other chakras. Uh, some people are, are, are strongest in their, in their sixth chakra. Some people are in their heart chakra. Some people in their solar plexus. So that's where your strengths are, but it's also where your vulnerabilities are. Because wherever you are strong, you don't realize that, oops, you know, my, my balance got off there because I'm so good there. And right. <laughs> so usually something to learn, too. So if, if somebody is stronger in one area, and again, we'll look at this, there are seven energies that are, have seven layers, which is really interesting, that number seven. Um, so you look at that, you have the stories, and then you define those stories based on what is strongest and what is most vulnerable, depending on, you know, when the person comes, is that correct? Like, you're, 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 are you, is your point about it to balance them? Or is your, because if one is always stronger, does it really need balancing? Or is it okay <laughs> that it's stronger? Oh, it's, it really, when somebody comes and is in trouble at, or wants to be balanced out, I mean, usually people would just, I don't have a practice anymore, but for 23 years I had a practice going. And somebody would lay on my table and they just gave themselves up to me so I could find out anything I wanted to find, unless they came with cancer or something like that. But if I just started working on them, I mean, nobody has to tell you. I mean, everybody who's been working in chakras long enough will say, oh, whoa, I see that da, 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 are that you, yes, you know it, you know mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to the nine energies. Let's go back to the, to the nine energy systems. We talked about meridians, which we know also relates to Chinese energy medicine, and we know chakras, which relates to the original um, energy system of the uh, ancient Vedas, really is where it came from, yeah. right? Ancient India. Yeah. Now we're talking about auras. So yeah. how, how do you teach people about auras, or what is that system? Well, the aura is like your invisible space suit that allows you to be here on planet Earth. I mean, it's so necessary. And when you don't have a strong aura, you know it because you're very susceptible to electronics and other people's energies. You're more susceptible when your aura is shot. Wow. <laughs> so, now you can, so there are seven layers in the chakra, I mean, in the aura. And, and any layer can be giving you trouble. Oh. So uh, and each, each band has, a, has different colors. Mm -hmm. and, and the sixth band is a band that, um, that, that I call the life color because it's the color that never changes. It's, it's your color. Wow. You have all your life from birth to death. And, it's, and you'll learn a lot of your lessons because of the energy on that band. It's, and if you meet other people who have that same life color, you'll know you've got some similarities going on with that person. Oh, and, so and, fascinating. And, yes, my other daughter, Titania, she, that's what she does. She gives color readings on the, on the life color. And oh, it's, uh, yeah, she's I'm gonna get a reading from her. It. This sounds like so yeah, much yeah. fun. I'm like into this, yeah, totally. She you too. She's been following you for years. Oh my Both gosh. Both daughters have. <laughs> All right. So now let's talk about the basic grid. The basic grid is, is very different than any other system. It's, okay, I'll, I'll bring up, if, here's a thought. <laughs> I just imagine that you have been working on yourself and working on yourself so hard. You've really done your work, but something is still off and you can't quite get it. Mm. You've been for years in therapy and it's still why aren't you as happy as you ought to be why don't da, 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 da. right well it's very often that your basic grid got thrown off like in a, if a house if a, if an earthquake hits a house maybe the house is just fine afterwards but the foundation got thrown off uh -huh. and the grid is like your foundation and it'll get thrown off and you don't know what's wrong and nobody else can find it either you put your grid in and you know oh Oh, that was it. And you teach people how to put that grid in. Oh my yeah. God, I know. I'm not, I yeah. know you do that, but I just have to keep throwing that in there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Now, this is a really interesting, and I want us to talk about the Celtic weave. That's number five, the Celtic weave. Yeah. The Celtic weave is a, is a bit like figure eights. It's a weaving. It's a huge weaving that weaves, and it's, it's, it's out further in your aura 
and it uh, it just weaves all the bands together. It weaves it weaves your soul and your spirit with your physical body, it, so that nothing really can be separated. You know, if you if if you go out in one uh, one part of your being, it'll affect other parts of your being. So the Celtic weave is really important if you get sick or in anything. But if you get sick, you know that you've got to weave all of your systems together. And mm-hmm. so it's very much like the figure eight that you did at your eyes, only it's very big and large. Wow. And why do you call it Celtic weave? You know, I've often, <laughs> long before I ever found anybody else who did anything like this, um, I felt that this came from my Celtic background. Mm-hmm. I had no idea that the Chinese had done meridians or anything. I, ju- I just thought it was from my Celtic background. Then I went to Ireland to find out. And I saw a woman at her clothesline. She had all of her clothes on her, on her clothesline. And she stood back and she Celtic weaved. Her, wow. She brought good energy to all of the clothes. And it was so, and it was an extraordinary thing to see. And it felt to me like her clothes even came alive. <laughs> and so, uh-huh. uh, so I've called it the Celtic weave ever since. Well, you know, I think in every single culture, original culture, there is commonalities, right? So maybe yes, it does come is. from your Celtic heritage. Because if That's you compare right. some of the ancient Celtic to the ancient Slavic, to the ancient other indigenous. It's, there is commonalities, even though we don't share the same land. That's exactly, exactly. I mean, I mean, there is no contradiction, by the way, regardless of even if there's if one culture's system is a little different, there's no contradiction. They all weave and play together. And play together. I know. I love that. Okay. Now the five rhythms. Let's talk about the five rhythms. Of the five rhythms are it's like, if you watch anyone walk or move or just be, you'll see that they move different or walk different mm-hmm. or are different. I mean, you'll say, well, that, I, you know, I love their rhythm. I, you know, you, you, uh-huh. you get it. Well, the rhythms are water, wood, fire, earth, and metal. And each of those, uh, that's the name of the five elements also. Mm-hmm. But I always have seen them as five rhythms because it's the energy as it moves. And... Um, and so waters have a movement that's really down close to the earth when they walk. You know, it's kind of a sexy walk and slow. And woods are more, mm, 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 here I am, <laughs> and you know exactly where you're going. And fire is kind of a skip. And earth is just, it, it just sort of lollygags al- or along. And metal is very straight and up. And walks like you've got and cool. a, a, a string. Yeah, and very, yes. Very cool. And so, and, and what is so extraordinary about them is that they really are an ad- identity in you that goes so deep. That rhythm is about everything, how it affects all the other energy systems and how you think and how you feel and who you are and how you relate to everybody in this world. So it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to learn. So far, and we still have a few to talk about, but what I've gained from this conversation so far is that everything is fluid. Everything is in movement. Everything weaves together. It it really is like, I know Greg Braden coined the term divine matrix, but there's this moving rhythmic divine matrix that all the systems that you've downloaded, obviously, because you found out afterwards that you know, yeah. it, it was, this was Chinese, this one's Indian, this, the, the yeah. things that you actually yeah. saw visually were systems that were ancient. That, that makes a yes. lot of sense. So now this is a really interesting one for me because I've done, I did not understand what the heck, why you called it this, the triple warmer, but I did those triple warmer wow. exercises also on your YouTube channel. And that also was my mind blowing. So tell <laughs> me please about the triple warmer. You know, Probably it was triple warmer that was the very first energy of anybody, of, huh. of any animal, of any living thing, probably because triple warmer helps you survive as a species. 
and and helps you survive no matter what the climate is or the terrain is or or what's going on inside you triple warmer will take over and try to keep you alive and the problem is is that it that was perfect a couple of million years ago <laughs> right. today you know your triple warmer can go off at, at you know when you're out in traffic and, and you're not too safe then for anybody else because uh because we haven't evolved our triple warmers. We re- it, it governs your fight, flight, or freeze, and it's also internally uh, when why you get allergies or why you get an autoimmune illness is triple warmer because it it doesn't know what to fight anymore. You've had too many stresses in your life, and now it, it's confused and it's fighting your own tissue, right? You know, and that an autoimmune is, and so I really want to see the world evolve triple warmer. Why did you call it triple warmer? Well, originally I didn't have a name for it. Okay. I just knew that, but I did know that, um, I used to have really bad PMS <laughs> and, and my temperature would go up. I would suddenly get so hot or a lot of people when they go through menopause, get, get, right. um, yeah. Hot flashes. And I, I, yes. Or it would be something so out of control. And I saw it in threes at that time. It was my temperature. It was my uh, something in my mood. And I felt wretched. So there was these three. But oh. then to find out in the, in Chinese medicine, I think they call it the triple heater or something the like that. The triple heater. Okay. Yes. Well, and, I, know it's, uh, I know it exists because I did those exercises and I couldn't believe it. Like it yes. was, again, yes. like, the, like the figure eight. Those triple yes. warmer exercises just got me right back into my body like that. It's true. Like that. Like that. It's <laughs> true. It's true. And triple warmer is really it needs to become a better friend to us to know that mm-hmm. we're trusting it to, to calm down now. And and right. um, and it's I mean, I I've watched it work on people. I used to work on people who were who had gosh, once I had a judge. A judge? Um, <laughs> I love your stories. Let's hear this. He sent sent people to me instead of sending them to jail sometimes if they had a really, if they went off the handle and beat up everybody in sight or something like that. He, because I lived in a small town and everybody in the town had taken a class from me at one time or another. And and this one judge said, hmm, maybe this, you aren't such a bad guy. Maybe this is just a triple warmer thing. And so he, he <laughs> That's wild. And yeah. did you help them? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. No problem anymore. Wow. <laughs> now let's talk about radiant circuits. I know you're teaching this class right now because I have signed up for it. Um, yes. So <laughs> talk, talk about radiant circuits. Uh, oh, this is, I think this one is so important uh, because underneath our levels of stress, and people tend to live like they're on alert all the yep. time. They can't quite relax. Well, if you can move that level out, which is a lot of that is triple warmer, then underneath that are, is our radiant circuits. And the radiant circuits are, are is your birthright. It's that uh-huh. sense of you suddenly have a sense of wonder about everything around you or, or a sense of hope or gladness or appreciation or just pure joy. And, um, and, and, and that is our natural. But mm-hmm. again, because we have not evolved triple warmer, people, mm-hmm. that is, uh, that's what you go back to is that triple warmer alert or, you know, the, being on safe? patrol is what I say. We're on patrol. Being on patrol. That's right? a good way of saying it. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, a radiant circuits is when you're not on patrol. Well, we need that. And I think that we've been trained to be back on patrol, everybody. When you look at the collective conditioning as you know, in the past few years, there's been so much of that, that people are conditioned to see the patrol way or the triple warmer reactivity as the, as the state of being that we're being actually hypnotized into being. So having this, I've seen people's reactions actually to this, uh, when you talk about it. And I think people are very attached to their triple warmer that they don't, they don't, want to be joyful because they don't trust that they yeah. will. And they, it, and, and, it, right. And you know, yes. And somebody sent me a little uh, quip this week about, uh, it, he had picked a, a line out of a book about 
uh, and it's about the 30s when uh, when an intellectual group grew up around uh, fascism and things right? in mm-hmm. Germany. But it was when whenever a culture becomes afraid, right? then they get suspicious of people who are too happy. Right. Oh, I love that you said that. Whenever a culture uh, begins to be afraid, the dominant culture becomes afraid, they begin yeah. to be suspicious about people who are too happy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm yeah. so, and I'm, I get it. It's so and, true. And, and that they are shallow. Those people are shallow and they're all sorts of things, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah, I thought that was a very interesting point that you made about yeah. the fact that the culture itself, you know, is, is almost becoming suspicious of anything that's too good, too beautiful, too, you know what I mean? When you want to foster joy and trust, etc. It's interesting. And, but yet you have all of these wonderful ways of teaching people. So let's now talk about the electrics. They are so interesting because they really do sit between um, a kind of a bridge between the energies and the physical body. And, and they also have an intelligence all of their own. So that I usually tell people, just, just you know, get into the sockets and hold them and just trust. Because you don't get to decide what the electrics will do once you've hooked up to them, you have to trust that your body has a higher intelligence and knows where it needs to heal. And right. amazing things happen, but you can't predict it. And it's, uh-huh. uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Can you give me an example of that? I mean, what you just said was so shocking. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> like okay. okay, you said the electrics okay. have their own intelligence. The body yes. has a higher intelligence. You can't predict what will happen when you hold them. So, so give me an example of a socket. Here's one, like right below your, I'll tell you where these points are. The, here's main electric points right at the bottom of your head, at the top of your neck. There's two little indent points. And if you, if somebody is holding your head, and puts their fingers into it, after a while, it'll feel like they're in a socket and they can't pull out. And they just, wow. and, and sometimes it'll hurt the person who's doing it. But you just stay there and stay there however long it takes. And eventually something begins to happen in the body. I've had people um, scream from a pain that comes though wow. too. But then it'll pass and then it's good because it often goes into scar tissue to heal scars. And uh, wherever your electricity is off, anywhere in your body, it will go. And and you know what electricity can do, it can jar Mm -hmm. you. So you can really feel it sometimes. But you're grateful once it's done. (laughs) I had a similar experience with, I don't know if you know Robert Pang. He's the uh, Jigong master. Robert? I know. Pang. Him and his yes. wife, are they not the coolest, most fun people? They're the coolest. Yes. They are so much fun. So I went to see him for the first time when he was still doing one-on-one. Uh, I went to New York and he put his finger just here under my nose and then underneath my lip. And it gave me such strong electric shocks there. I was blown away. And then he made a joke. I'd never met him before. Like, see, I'm not plugged into the wall. Ha ha ha. Like, he's so funny. (laughs) I was so freaked out. And then he put his hand uh, behind my, exactly where you said, was two hands there. And my leg straightened out. It was my leg that was causing me a problem. He didn't even go near my leg. It was bizarre. It was very cool. Can I tell you what he did? Yeah. Tell me what he did. You tell me (laughs) what he did. All right. First of all, yes, he, he did. He activated your electrics but the point underneath your nose and the point right below your lip, uh, those two points, when they're held, you will begin to hook up at the back of your throat. And once that happens, there's another field of energy that goes around your body called the microcosmic orbit. And it is so powerful. It is so powerful. You just feel like it's just really good for you if you're all hooked up in that. Well, I walked 30 blocks after that. I'm I'm like, I did. I walked all the way from the 70s in New York all the way down to the 30s. Like with no problem. I didn't even realize I was walking 40 blocks. It was crazy. Let's talk about, um, yeah, let's talk about the, how the electrics, again, that socket, is that what, you know, when you do, people do craniosacral, is that sort of the same thing when they hold spots or do they? Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes they'll hold electric points. Sometimes 
they will always tend to hold the neurovasculars on the head. Oh. And neurovasculars is something that I teach too. In fact, have you ever thrown your hand up to your forehead and said, oh my God, or something like sure. that? Sure. Oh. Yeah. Oh my well, God. I put my hand on my forehead. Yes. Well, that comes from our ancient ancestors from millions of years ago. They had to have done that all the time because if, when you put your hand up here, your hand is electromagnetic. Yeah. You're, you're, and when you put your hand up here, it tends to pull the, the blood back up into your forebrain so that you can think again, so that you're balanced again, so that your body won't get totally off. And it's really necessary during stress. But wow. if somebody would... Yeah, if you just hold your hand there longer. So cranial sacral people will hold their uh, uh, neurovascular points all over the head. These are the main ones. Just but right on your very, forehead, putting your hand right on your on forehead. Your forehead. Yeah. Isn't or put that... One also, put one on your forehead, one on the back of your head, and hold them together with your head as, you know, like a sandwich there. And uh, it will... It's very, very good for your polarities and for pulling the blood back into your forebrain. And it'll it calm you. It's really, really good. Oh, I should do that because I have vertigo sometimes. I had, um, I was diagnosed with benign positional labyrinthial vertigo or something named like that. And uh, yeah, like little crystals in your ear. I had an accident when I was younger. Anyhow, so that I'm going to try that because that sounds Gandhi like... Gandhi has that too. And she knows... She? And here's what she does. She puts one finger in her belly button and one at the third eye <gasps> and hooks herself up. And it takes about 30 seconds, and then she's okay again. Wow. This is so fascinating. Can we pull a card? Um, can we just pull an oracle oh, card to see yes. if there's any subject that you and I should talk oh, about I that we haven't that. talked? Okay, I good. I love that. Yes, please. Excellent. So you know that also um, the oracle cards actually work off of energy as well. So they will reflect our energy. I'm using the wisdom of the oracle deck, my deck. Okay. Oh, okay. The importance of being here and now. Oh. <laughs> Let's talk about that. The energy well, of the here and now. Uh, first of all, I think that that's what energy medicine does. It, it, it helps you to be in the here and now, in your complete presence with wherever you are. And it will open you to feeling more. And and if you if you feel like you're too sensitive it will help you feel positive about being sensitive. Like, whoa, I can, you start, I mean, your sensory awareness will open up more and more and it won't make you feel afraid. It will make you feel very comfortable in it and to know just naturally how to move out what doesn't feel good. You'll, you'll get, you'll get a sensing of it. It's like right outside my windows are these amazing trees. And I feel like when I walk by these trees, the, the, an energy is sent out from the trees and it just embraces me and pulls me to the tree. And it's, it's like a, an amazing communication. And I sometimes think they're more advanced than humans. There's <laughs> a new study on that. There actually, there's an author, I think she, she wrote a book called Finding the Mother Tree or Finding the Home Tree. Oh. It's like it's the, and she's oh. actually done all these studies on how trees communicate. And energetically, I've got goosebumps everywhere right now. And it's not that tennis stuff that you talked about. <laughs> so I also believe too that, you know, we leak energy outside of the here and yes. now. And I had to learn how to do that. Um, I've been clean and sober now 36 years. So I learned how to live one day at a time way back when, when I first got sober, because of course I was living freaked out about the future yeah. about, you know, and about yeah. what happened in the past. So I, I learned that that's the only way yeah. that I could actually yeah. be present if I stayed present Yes. It's a very, even when I talk about, you know, the potential futures, I always tell somebody that's a potential, but it all is based on your point of vantage right now. If you aren't present now, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Because you can change yeah. anything. You really can. Exactly. I, I often tell people, you know, if, if you just put both hands right here in your heart chakra, mm -hmm. take a breath and you come back home to yourself, you'll suddenly be in present with everything. Yeah. You come back home to yourself. I think yeah. that's beautiful. Oh, okay. This is awesome. So I'm going to ask you a question. What do you see for us um, as we move into an uncertain future? What do you see? What is possible for humanity in your estimation? In the world we live in with all the crazy energy the crazy. going on with <laughs> politics and everything, 
At the same time, I see things that I never saw before. I see people, I do think people are evolving. I think yeah. that's happening. I think consciousness is rising. I think, yes, there's a, there's a real battle between two kinds of consciousness, but I see consciousness rising. And I'm very excited about it. And I have a, do you know who Gene Houston is? Of course I know who Gene Houston okay. is. Of course I do. I love Gene. Yeah, well, she's a very good friend. And as she told me recently, she said um, that all throughout history, every Every time there has been a pandemic, uh, the plague, whatever it is, right afterwards, a renaissance happens. A renaissance happens, exactly. Yes. After every plague comes a yes. change because it yes. has to and a renaissance. And that's, I agree with you. We have yeah. to hold space for the renaissance. I agree with so you. I, yeah, I believe that the future is, is good. It's good. <laughs> yeah, I love that. It's okay. <laughs> Me too. I feel the same way as you. And and if we if we distract ourselves too much by all the polarity and the politics yeah. and of this and against yeah. that, it's a distraction. But yeah. it is though, like we talked about earlier, the resistance bands. You you build That's a stronger right. muscle, you change the muscle That's when right. there is the resistance. So That's whatever. Right. Like we just have to life on life's terms and then we focus on yeah. the love. And where yeah. could we bring more love into the world? Tell me about that. Oh, I, well, I think the first thing is just to feel it. If you don't have anywhere to put it, boy, just go inside and, boy, feel love. Remember what it felt like to fall in love or remember loving your mom or loving somebody or a best friend. And then just just be in nature and give the love to nature and give to the love to people. And, oh, I love to walk down the street and love up people. Yeah. I, Love it. I'm not, you know what? One of the things that I used to do, because I lived in Toronto for the longest time, and a practice that I had when I just got sober was to get on the subway and look for beauty in every single person on that I could see and send them love. And if I was in a crappy mood or if I was super self-centered, as you know, most early alcoholics are, I, I it would totally get out of myself. I would, right? So yeah. you just get right out of yourself. But you're right. It's being the love. It's being, yeah, being the, love, the love, not being worrying about love. where you're going to get it. Yeah. It's Just give it. it. Keep That's giving it. it. And it's I the best. It. And it's, it's better than anything you can drink or take. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Better than anything you can drink or take. Okay. So before we go, I want to let everyone know where they can find you online. Donna's website is EdenMethod.com. And Donna's okay. also offering a free one hour energy class, which you can sign up for at EdenMethod.com forward slash free dash energy dash class. Wow, Donna, thank you so much. I <laughs> loved chatting with you. I can hardly wait to have you back again because now I have a million more things that I want to talk about. We don't have oh, enough time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> can I say something real quick? You can. If, if you just want to see some fun, easy things, me and my kids. Have made it. We used to every single Wednesday would make an energy minute wherever yeah. we traveled. We'd say, "We're in Dublin, Ireland, and this is your Wednesday energy minute." And we just do an, a one minute energy thing that people. A lot of people have told me that's how they've learned energy medicine. By I love your energy minutes. minutes. I'm glad we brought that up because I didn't have it to, write, to tell people. Yeah, get it, get it on YouTube. Go YouTube. to our YouTube and yeah, just yeah. put in my. So is it. Donna Eden on YouTube or Donna, Donna Eden? Yes. On YouTube. Yes. Awesome. I know. And, I watched and, them. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Donna, for joining us. I so appreciate it. Everybody, you've been listening to Inside the Wooniverse. This is Colette Baron Reed. And until next time. <laughs>